Migration halt to crash property. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Working through my Stein of Coffee, I thought we'd have a look at this realestate.com.au article that was originally from the Daily Telegraph discussing the impact that a crash or a halt essentially and migration will have on property markets. And of course they're focusing on Sydney because Sydney is the center of the Australian property world. And let's have a look at this because it is going to have a huge impact. I'll just bring up a chart here looking at our population growth statistics. And you can see for some time, the majority of Australia's population growth has come from migration, net overseas migration. And I know this chart is a bit old, but you know the figures continue until now. So Sydney property, a decrease in migrants due to the pandemic will have a major impact on the market. Now, here's the thing. One thing I learned when I was studying economics years ago was that immigration, migration into a civilization from another, new people coming in, has a slightly positive benefit on the economy. It's not a net negative. Usually they, they bring as much demand for economic activity as they partake from taking employments. It's kind of about, it's meant to be neutral, essentially. So just think about that when, when our property sector is being pushed up and up and up and we're bringing more people in from that, it's meant to be a neutral outcome. So Sydney's investment apartment market is particularly vulnerable to closed borders. The property economist, Dr. Andrew Wilson, has noted after the Prime Minister confirmed the pending big drop in immigration. Oh yes, I think a lot of sectors are quite vulnerable to that, particularly investment market. And we'll bring up this chart here. This is just showing the property price growth that's happened in, well, all of our major cities. Just look at that growth since 2006, everyone. It's shot up. It really has grown significantly. And that a lot of that's been on the back of, of migration and demand. But the thing is, the thing is, what if you've, you know, I've met people that have come over to Australia, they've, they've gotten the postgraduate education here, they've invested a lot of money, and then they can't find work in their field. There's no options for them or people that are working here, but the cost of living is so high, the cost of housing is so high, it's better for them to move back, back home, because quality of life is better. Just think about that, guys. Particularly the property council trying to encourage more people over here. Is it a little bit deceptive? Scott Morrison advised reduced immigration was going to be one of the real impacts of the pandemic because our borders aren't opening up anytime soon. And that is definitely gonna hit property. It has previously been noted a jump of between 160,000 and 210,000 was needed to maintain a GDP per capita growth. But in 2020, 2021, the government anticipates an increase of just 36,000 people. So we're entering in recession. Consumer confidence, well, business confidence is in the gutter. Consumer confidence is in the gutter. And now population growth is taking a huge hit because immigration isn't coming over. Dr. Wilson at My Housing Market website said he was most concerned about any reduced demand from students, along with a collapse in tourists. He said these two factors had contributed to the current spike in rental vacancies for landlords in, Sydney's, in Sydney, which was still at peak new supply from the recent building boom. The recent building boom. Let's bring up, I'm just opening up a, a website here. Let's bring up the property data room. I need to pre-program it into my my um, stream deck, but I'll get there guys, I'll get there. We'll look at the property data room. Let's have a look at uh, residential. This is from the Property Council of Australia. We've got median house values. Where do we have it? Residential property index. We'll look at value index by sentiment type. Let's have a look at residential. I mean, there you go. Look at the index. Oh, you can't see it. You can now. It's just plummeted. It has just plummeted. We can look at tourism. It has plummeted. We'll look at retirement. It's plummeted. So sentiment is just crashing everywhere. What about office? retail it's a consistent story so sentiment 
has really taken a hit. Let's look at median residential unit rents. We'll see in Sydney, it, whoa, $525. And remember, this data is from February. It's from February, so it's surely going to take a hit. And our tourism sector, everyone, that's a big industry. You know, 600,000 or over 600,000 employed. And that also, the student, international students, that feeds into our education sector, which is another huge industry. And a lot of our universities are in a lot of trouble because they're quite dependent now on foreign students. But then that also feeds into our construction industry, everyone, because a lot of the multi-res or student accommodation creates a lot of employment, building them and maintaining them. And then, <laughs> then that feeds into super who invest in a lot of these things. While the recent impact of high immigration on Sydney's housing market had been overstated, particularly in relation to home buyers, Dr. Wilson said the weakening rental market was being affected by reduced immigrant numbers. Well, here's the thing. I mean, this is, this, this is going to have an impact on investment units. Will it have an impact on housing? Will it have an impact on housing? There's the question. The government has a clear responsibility to do all that it can to encourage migration, which always remains a positive for the Sydney housing market and the broader economy, he said. But he acknowledged that high levels of immigration would be a real tricky proposition to sell with 10% plus unemployment. Well, our unemployment and underemployment now is about 25%. Do you think they're going to pull, push for more immigration to keep property growing? Do you think they're going to, you know, AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver said the drop in immigration will cut underlying demand for housing by about 80,000 dwellings per annum nationally from a norm of about 200,000 dwellings in recent years. Mr. Oliver said for New South Wales, the reduction will be about 26,000 dwellings, and most of this will be felt in Sydney. So that's going to have to have an impact on property, guys. It's going to have to. This reduction in demand comes at a time when the rental vacancy rate in Sydney has already jumped from well above average levels and still faces a large increase in unit supply ahead. As a result, it will, along with higher underlying unemployment levels, put downward pressures on property prices. Now was not the time to be rethinking immigration, Tom Forrest the boss of the property development group Urban Task Force said, immigration is critical to maintaining economic growth and pulling our country out of a recession. But here's the thing, guys. It's not economic growth. It is neutral. It is just neutral. This is the thing. You need to have other, other activity to grow. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Immigrants are generally young and often come with skills which support economic growth, which in turn generates taxation revenue. Well, this is the advantage that Australia has. Our immigration system is very difficult. You have to jump through a lot of hoops. You've got to tick a lot of boxes. And, you know, I'm first generation Australian. My father immigrated over after uh, the wall went up in Germany. He got out, applied to a whole series of countries. Australia was the first to take him. They paid for him to come over here. It was a different time then, but he was skilled. He was skilled. And this is the thing. You've got skilled immigrants coming over. You just want to ha ensure there's the economic complexity to sustain them and to give them opportunities. Nothing's worse than an immigrant coming over with a doctorate and then just having to drive Uber to make a living. Or someone coming over to study a master's and then all they're doing is, you know, working bedpans in an aged care home. That's kind of, kind of really a terrible sign for our nation more than anything. Looking at the debate... The chief economist at PRD Estate Agency, Dr. Dzwati Mardiasomo, I butchered that, said just the thought of less immigration could spark an initial uncertain reaction. However, if we look at the level of residential construction, there is a downturn as well, she said. From a property perspective, yes, migration does make up a portion of demand, with the theory that higher migration equals higher demand for property. But she noted... It's also about the balance between supply and demand. In a way, both supply and new housing and demand will only include, will only, if we only include migration demand is traveling in the same direction. Both are going down, the doctor said. So there we have it, guys. Property is looking to take a hit 
from this decrease in migration and every pundit in the property sector is just calling for more for more and more when we have potential you know we've got high unemployment and high underemployment here in australia and we're facing our first recession in 29 years and of course the government to stimulate it is throwing everything at property there's nothing innovative no special economic regions has there been any investment in potable water what about cheaper efficient energy i can't say i'm surprised guys i can't say i'm surprised there's not the political will to be innovative or bold it's going to be more status quo and that's for both sides hard left or left line take your pick as always please let me know your thoughts and opinions what would you suggest that should happen do you think property will take a hit do you think it'll affect housing or will it just be those investor apartments and airbnbs as always thank you for watching if you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content there are a few ways you can you can join us here on youtube or patreon you can support us via our affiliate links at amazon or ebay or independent reserve and kucoin you can buy a merch from heiser says you can support use gold pass from the perth mint or support us via paypal take care guys have a great day and i'll see you next time